has made your heart of stone as soft as a flesh and calmed your weary soul in his arms. So look to him who holds all of earth in the stars. Everybody. My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we're on the Yahoo and Tor YouTube channel. Yeah, right. And we almost did that in um, stereo there. We thank you guys very, very much. Uh, I believe that song was by Left Right Ministries. Is yes. that correct? That was a new one from Left right, right Ministries. And much love to everybody out there. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. It is a Shabbat. And it is the day that our Creator has made, it is the day of rest that His uh, people are destined to take, that He needs to. That we need to do because he has told us to do this and there's you know there's a lot of people that watch this channel not a lot of people watch this channel but particular of the videos that we watch we get more views on this shabbat video than we get anywhere so i wanted to bring this first and foremost and and give everyone a, a before you spend too much time here let us explain to you guys who we are and what we are about and We've been doing this on YouTube now for, for a long time, and we've been reading scriptures for a very, very long time. We don't call ourselves teachers. We don't call ourselves anything other than just a little family out in the middle of the jungle who is reading scriptures with all of you. And what we have found to be the truth for our walk is that everything from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, which we call the Torah, all the way to the very end of Revelations is what we keep as doctrine. Anything outside of that, which is man-made doctrines, is what we do not keep. We do not bring to our table, and it is things, and, and we have lived our entire life coming up as Christians in a Christian religion. And when you start reading scriptures, when you actually start getting into it, the entire premise of once saved, always saved, the entire premise of you can have a walk in the, in the kingdom to come, but you do not have to be obedient to our creator— that is anti-God, that is satanic. And if you believe there are two commandments and two commandments only or something of that sort, that is outside of scriptures and that is not what it means. And so we are those people who believe that the law, statutes and commands are for all times. They will bless you, they will bless your life if you will observe them, if you will keep them, if you will make them part of your life. And if you don't, unfortunately, they come with another set of curses. And instead of the blessings that we are hoping for with, with obeying our creator and falling into a covenant with him, we fall into the curses and the curses are bad things that none of us want to have. And so good morning to everybody out there. Let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we ask that you will dwell with us, that you will bring the Ruha HaKadosh, that you will give us the understanding that you need to give us, that we are able to understand your ways and understand your 
your righteous ruling. Father, we love you. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your Torah. We thank you for a way forward. And Father, I thank you for this little ecclesia that we can hang out, that we can see people who are like-minded, the people that love you, Father, that love your ways and love your son. Father, we thank you for everything. We ask this all in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right. Who do we got in the chat room, Mystical? Well, they said sound's going in and out, so uh -oh. hopefully. Sound is going in and out. That's not good. Um, I don't know how bad is it. How bad is the sound going in and out? I don't know. A sound the left came back. It's better now. Okay, so hopefully um, it is coming back. All right, so let us begin, um, and hopefully it's hopefully, not. You wanted me to say who's in the group? Yeah, who's in the group, actually? <laughs> we first. have Brother Glenn. We have The Grand. We have Cindy L. J. and Tess. We have Judith. We have Zachari Zachariah, Damon, Rhiannon, and a new face um, named Tam. Hi, Pam. Tam. Tam. Hi. Tam. Hi, Tam. Hi, everybody. And I think it's Damon D, Rhiannon, and Slagger, Cindy L, J, Tess. Much love, everybody, family. We love you guys very, very much. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Let us begin with a. It's a, it's a it's a blessing, and so let us let us. Um, it's kind of a blessing. It is it's more of a motto, I suppose, um, or more of a uh, way forward that we all have, and that comes out of Deuteronomy six, and this is called the Shema. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah is one, and you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might, and these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes and you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. All right, gentlemen, um, what do you guys make of the, the Torah? I, I want to discuss this real quickly before we go into this. What we do every single week as we go through the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. Now, there's people that believe there are only two commandments, and that comes from the New Testament, or that comes from the Besora, the good news, and people, instead of reading further or trying to understand that there are more than two commandments, but let's take, for instance, let's say, for instance, there are only two commandments. What are the two commandments that the Christians are talking about, gentlemen? They love Yahuwah with all your heart, mind, and soul, and the other one is love your neighbor as yourself. And when you say Yahuwah, who are you talking about? Everyone as knows. Everyone knows me as God or the Lord. Right. And so when when we're talking about these two commandments, that we are to love our neighbor as ourself and to love our creator with all our heart, mind, and soul, when we look at those two, and if we only had two commands, and we loved our creator with all our heart, mind, and soul, we would by default love what comes out of his mouth. We would love his ways. We would love the things that he does. So if we are taking and say, okay, we only have two commandments, or let's just say we have 10 commandments because the Christians will go, well, we, we have the moral law, but then you say, well, what about the fourth commandment, which is observing the Sabbath? Uh, well, we, we, we have our own Sabbath. We change the Sabbath day, right? That is what the Christians will say. So right out of the gate, if you have 10 commandments, you're busting down one, you got a 90%. Now, if we're supposed to be have a cling hearts, cling souls, cling minds, and be obedient to our creator, and we're already sporting a 90%, then we're not going to make the kingdom to come. The kingdom to come is for obedient people who are willing to do what our creator has told us to do. And those, this is what we're about to read right now. There's nothing more important than what we're about to read because these are the laws of our creator. And if you don't like the laws of our creator, if they don't apply to you, tell me which one. If somebody's in the chat or someone in the comments, as we go through this, say, okay, um, I don't wanna be fruitful. That law does not apply to me. Okay, why? Why, doesn't, why don't you want to be fruitful? How would your life look if you are not fruitful? Why is the very first commandment that we are ever to find in our life that, that in our reading says be fruitful. That's very important. But if we're going to put them on the cross, we need to be specific and put the right ones. Put what are we what are we putting on the cross, right? So let's go through that. And I know that everyone here, our family right here, is um, we're all Torah keepers. But this is for the people that come later because we do have a lot of Sunday keepers that watch a tremendous amount of this stuff. And so before we begin, 
let us begin. Ms. Nicole, what do you got? Zechariah Z says two equals ten, ten equals all commandments. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. Yeah, uh, everything. Um, the commandments of our Creator, there's not a bad commandment. And the people, and if your excuse right out of the gate is, well, we don't have animals to kill and we haven't, we don't, we can't do any of that. You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. And we don't need to. That's why we must be very understanding that from the beginning of Genesis 1 1 to the very end of Revelation 21 or 22? Uh, 22. 22. 22 chapters. All the way. That is the doctrine. And you can't take one verse out of it and make a complete doctrine. You have to have the entire book. And so let's get into this, gentlemen, and let's see where we are at and how we are going to be doing. Commandment number one, gentlemen, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. So do it. Have you been over the fish, fowl, and every living creature? Okay. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Go Yahuwah's covenants, laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay. Now, as we touch on this, I don't want to bore the folks who are here, but the folks who are here, I don't think get bored over me reiterating that these commandments are for us all life, all generations, all time from the break of dawn to this, the Indian. Uh, it's just, they're for us. If our creator tells us something once, it's important. If he tells us twice, boy, we better figure this out. If he tells us three times, boy on, um, this, is, uh, this, is, this is a problem. So we have this, but we have this 53 times we are told to obey to guard and not let go of these and if you think that putting the laws statutes and commandments on the cross and not living by them is guarding them that's not guarding them my friends okay every male child shall be certain since eight days old teach your children the commands and guard the way of yahuwah remember yahuwah's name for all generations he's the passover pesach keep the feast of unleavened bread matzah there is one torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrian. Sanctify all firstborn to Yeshua. Okay, now let's go back to this. I got to stop. I got to go back to this commandment 17 because I've been reminded of a conversation that I had with a gentleman this week. The gentleman who thinks we have two commandments. Guys, this is very, very clear. Commandment 17 is clear. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what race. It doesn't matter what creed. It doesn't matter what language you speak. There is one Torah. That means there's one set of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy for every person. It does not matter where you're at. Just because you want to call yourself a Christian and that is your religion, that is not a religion organized by our creator. That is a religion organized by man that goes contrary to what scripture says. So if you think that you are some new school people out of the 21st century that do not need the Torah of the old school people, I'm telling you, commandment 17 says there is one Torah for all of us and it doesn't matter who you are. If you want to seek our creator, if you want to seek his ways, if you want that kingdom road, there is one Torah for you. Okay, sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to it. Keep the Sabbath day, right? And look at this, guys. How many times? You look at all of these commandments, and the ones that have multiple verses are the things we should take even more specific notes of. We have the very first one, Commandment 17, has over 53 times we're told of this. Command, or, uh, is it Commandment 17? Kevin, yeah, it's the first one. Commandment 22 here has a pile of them that says, keep the Shabbat. Now, if you are waking up on a Sunday, on a first day of the week, and you're going to go hang out with all of your church friends, and then you go eat your pork potluck at the end of it, there is no creator involved in this. Our creator is not with you. And if you think that you can get you can get these funny feelings and you can feel like you need the altar calls, you can get the, the organ music and everybody can become really, really spiritual. But I'm telling you, Hasatan can bring these same feelings to you because you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong, our creator is not with you on a first day. Go where our creator is, which is the Shabbat. Okay, honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yahuwah's name. Peace. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress the stranger, fatherless. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before. 
set. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge them actually against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your oat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends you for you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outside of the land. Do not make or use this anointing oil on a normal person. Do not make or use perfume on a normal person. Do not eat fat. Do what you say you're going to do. Return. What is your neighbor's? Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement. Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not make. You shall not sacrifice your son to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely to defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Do pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverge your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle in any wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not file your temple. Do not consult a medium. Respect your elders. Have correct ways and measures. Don't walk to the manager of the nation. Yeah. So I want to go back. Brother Glenn just talk, popped a comment on there um, that was talking about Hasatan um, roaming around as a, as a messenger of light, right? And that, that, again, I think that goes to that Sunday church service where everybody gets, you know, filled with what they believe is the Holy Spirit. And they, you know, they go in at 10 o'clock and you go to Sunday school. Then 11 o'clock, you do this. You have an hour. By the time you're done with that hour, you, you're, you're full of the Holy Spirit. The preachers told you what you wanted to hear. You're, you're, there's no way you're not going to make it to heaven. All we're waiting on is, is simply the rapture. And the people that are simply waiting on this rapture are the people that are letting everything in the world just kind of go by because they don't believe that any kind of affliction or issues are going to come their way. And Hasatan has made a giant joke of all of this, right? All these rapture-believing Christians that believe they can sit there and eat pork and do all of this evil stuff, Satan is laughing at, at the entire world. They're, they we're a giant joke, and he has, he has basically corrupted the entire world so that pork is in just about everything. And so... We gotta be very, very careful in, in all of the stuff that we're doing. All right, let's continue on. Have correct weights and measurements. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yam Turah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemi Yatzaret. If you blast in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Uh, hold on, I was reading the comments. Where are we at? 100. 100? Or repay okay. injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins, Yahuwah, and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. Where is he zeal on four corners of your garments? The law of whoever touches the corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws from his inheritance. Torah, Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Okay, and they're very important right here, right? If we're talking about Hasatan being a somebody who can masquerade as an angel of light, right? When we take away from the Torah, let's say we observe Sunday keeping, right? We decide that we are going to be able to do this. We are adding to the scriptures, right? When we are eating pork, we are literally taking away from the scriptures and adding to the scriptures. If you ask any Christian why it is they eat pork, they'll say, well, um, Jesus, he, he, uh, all food has been made clean. That is the very first thing that everybody says. And that, again, all food has not been made clean. We have a dietary code that lives in Leviticus 11. We're not to eat lots of food that is bad for us. And people are like, well... Um, that's just the sweet taste of pork, and because it tastes so good, our creator doesn't want us to have that. And that was the test. But now, all food has been made clean, which you can eat that. And again, that is from the, the mouth of Hasatan. That does not exist. All food has not been made clean. If you read things in context, it doesn't say that. It's talking about washing your hands. It has That's what it has to do with washing your hands. It doesn't have to do with what you're eating at all. Okay, guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. She who shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. 
Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy grab images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah bless you with. Do not delight in what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of the false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes to the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. There are three times a year, and all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asheroth poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. Prophet has to do your omni. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is get all portions. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost, you find them and you must return them. A woman must not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that they daily lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset. If that was his pledge. You know, the hired servant that is poor and needy. Okay, let's let's take a quick look. Um, I think shellfish is uh, yeah, that's definitely not food. Shell shellfish is uh, that's unclean. Shellfish is bad. Um, lobster is bad. Shrimp is bad. Catfish. Catfish is bad. Um, Clams. Roadkill is bad. Um, yeah, things of that nature. All right, where are we at, gentlemen? Uh, one fifty-three. All right, one fifty-three. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. All right. So, um, thank you guys very, very much for going through these with us. And I, these are probably the most important things that you may ever hear in your lifetime. Um, well, other than you're accepted into the Shemaim. I mean, it's, you'll either hear depart from me or you'll hear welcome my friend. And um, that's what we're attempting to do is get to the welcome my friend and brother. And um, so let's, before we do that, I want to take a quick look over here at the top of our website here. And this is the yahuwahandthetorah.net website. And last week we had nine books up there. And we've been extremely busy this week. And now we have a lot of books up here. If you guys take a look at this, and not only do we, what happens, what we're doing is we're taking it from a, literally a piece of paper and copying it line by line and then having to re-add all of the special words and all of the crazy stuff. And this is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, taxing our family. And we have had a crazy week where a lot of us are really tired. A lot of us are tired of reading stuff. A lot of us are tired of pacing stuff, but we're only beginning. And so um, if you guys can give us some prayers for some stamina for Boss Clan, we have a schedule. We're trying to get through the entire scriptures inside of three months and have them available to everybody so that they can be literally given to book printers. And there's already people in line who want to put this book out. And we're gonna. this book is going to be completely awesome. Um, it, and it's going to be available completely free to everybody. So you guys can just keep us in prayers for that we would appreciate that and um, if you guys have any kind of prayer requests either let us know we are happy to pray for you add you guys to our prayer request list and um we again we're, we're happy to pray for all of you guys okay so we are into our reading everyone how's everyone there good everyone good good okay so we are in genesis 30 and so for those who do not know what we're reading, this is the bottom is the ex Hallelujah scriptures. They, um, they gave up the rights to this because they were criminals. And so they gave up the rights and they it is now available for everybody. And so it's now Yahuwah scriptures at the bottom. And the upper part is called the Targums. And the Targums is another translation um, that we don't, it, we're, it's kind of iffy, but we've learned a tremendous amount of things out of it. And so, Mr. Cole, what do you, what do you have? Glenn is rather funny. What's, what's so the grand said swine is not divine. Yeah. So Glenn says only swine think they are divine because Satan tells them so. Yeah, Satan tells them to. Where did we find out about uh, Messiah and those pigs and that, that temple? That was from Brother Todd Bennett, huh? Yeah. Okay, so what's something interesting that we did not know, um, if you guys remember, this is from a reading from Brother Todd Bennett last week, is that um, when Messiah sent all those 
pigs down over the cliff to die. Um, it didn't make it doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense to all of us why it was such a big deal on this whole thing, except that was located where there was a temple, like an Apollyon temple, right, right there, where they all they did was kill swine, and so Messiah. Basically, he got rid of all the swine of that whole thing. So they had to go bring up the whole new thing. So they were taking those pigs and sacrificing them to Apollyon and all the, their, their bales and things of that nature. So that was the interesting thing. So the pigs all got annihilated uh, at behest of Messiah. Um, and, you know, they couldn't do their, their uh, sacrifices for a bit. All right, let's begin. Everyone ready? Yep. Yay. This is Genesis chapter 30. And when Rachel, Rachel saw that she bore, she bore Jacob no children... Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, give me children or else I am going to die. Okay, that's a hardcore request. Um, you know, uh, if you're a man, you're like, ah, I don't, I don't know how to make this happen. Okay. And Jacob's displeasure burned against Rachel. And he said, am I in the place of Elohim who has withheld from you the fruit of your womb? And I mean, obviously it was a her thing because he ended up with a bunch of kids. And so, uh, yeah, he had, he had a pile of kids, so there's obviously no problems with uh, his setup. Okay, three. And she said, See, my, fav my female servant, Billa, go into her and let her bear over my knees and let me be built up from her as well. So she gave him Billa, her female servant, as wife, and Jacob went into her. And Billa conceived and bore Jacob a son. And now we know from the Targums that Billa was who, gentlemen? That was basically another sister. Yeah, si this, a half sister. A half sister of. Um, this family's all messed up. Yeah, this family has some issues, for sure. Okay, five. And Billa conceived and bore Jacob a son, which I read. And Rachel said, Elohim has rightly ruled my case and has also heard my voice and, and given me a son. So she called his name Dan. Now, this is, this is interesting, right? She's celebrating the birth of her handmaid's son. It's not even hers, but it's essentially, I guess it's, it's like hers, right? I guess if the handmaid has the kid, um, I guess the handmaid is still the mother to, a, to like most of it, but I guess it is kind of like bonded in, which I, I wonder if these folks had the same house or if the handmaid lived in a separate house or anything. I, I don't know any of that. So, seven. And Rachel's female servant, Billa, conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister and I have overcome. So she called his name Naphtali. And again, she seems to be celebrating because it seems to be that these are um, her kids in, in this essence. Okay, so we're heading back up to the Targums at the top. Uh, we're verse eight at the bottom. Glenn says Rachel means little lamb. I little lamb? I didn't know that. Rachel was a little lamb. Rachel means little, little lamb. lamb. Oh, what? Little, little, so little, little lamb. lamb. So Mary had a Rachel. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> All right, I got it. No, okay. Here we go. We're going to the targets at the top. Okay, and this one says Rahel, but I'm just gonna say Rachel because I, I don't know what it's supposed to be. But and Rachel saw that she bare not to Jacob, and Rachel was envious of her sister and said to Jacob, "Pray before Yahuwah that he give me children, and if not, my life I shall reckon as the dead." And the anger of Jacob was strong against Rachel. And he said, why do you ask of me? Ask before Yahuwah from, from before whom are children and, whom, and who hath restrained from thee the fruit of the womb. And she said, behold, my handmaid Billah, enter with her that she may bear and I may increase and may be builded up from her. And she made her handmaid Billah free and delivered her to him. And Jacob entered with her. All right, there's something we don't know. Something we've never heard. Made and she friend. made Billa free. So she's no longer a servant. So she's no longer a servant. But does that, I mean, it's just really weird. It's a, it's a weird system. It is a weird system. It's a very odd system. Um, it's like Rachel is definitely celebrating kids from her ex-servant. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to say it, but here we go. Nine. Uh, where are we at? Well, yeah. top We're six. up top. Why, why'd you let me go? You let, okay. Like keep, keep, me up, keep me up there. Navigator. Okay. Uh, you, uh, and Billa. Uh, and Billa. No, made Billa free and delivered her to him. And Jacob entered in with her, and Billa conceived and buried son to Jacob. And Rachel said, Yahuwah hath judged me in his good mercies. He hath also heard the voice of my prayer and given me a son. And so it is to be that he shall judge by the hand of Shimshon bar Manovak, who shall be of his seed. 
Okay, what were we saying here? Sam, Sam, Samson. Okay, and hath not he and he hath he not delivered into his hand the people of the Philistine? Philistine. Uh, what is what are we talking about? This is before. Is she prophesying? I know who yeah. this is talking about, but she must be prophesying. Yeah. Just like Landon. But you think they really? They think they knew this? They think I their mothers know. knew this? Maybe. All right. I don't know. Okay. Therefore, she called his name Dan. And Billah, the handmaid of Leah, conceived again and bare a second son to Jacob. And Rachel said, With affliction afflicted was I before Yahuwah in prayer. Therefore, he hath received my request that I might have a son as my sister, and hath given me two. Even so are my children to be redeemed from the hand of their enemies when they shall afflict themselves in prayer before Yahuwah. And she called his name Naphtali. Okay, now we're, heading, now we're heading back to the bottom. Nine. Is it nine? Yep. Uh, I don't think we did that. Yeah, you, did, we, yeah. did we already do it? Yeah. Okay, nine. And Leah saw that she had ceased bearing, and she took Zilpha, her female servant, and gave her to Jacob as wife. And Leah's female servant, Zilpha, bore Jacob a son. It's become a competition, I think, at this point. It, yeah, it's, it's definitely a competition, and it's... it's it's really sad because we're dealing with human emotions and we're dealing with people who are, it, this, is, this is why a marriage is a perfect commitment, right? It's a man, it's a woman. Anything outside of that, you can see the problems that are happening and you can see this and 99.9% .9 of the, the men and women out there would not be able to handle this multiple marriage thing like this. It would, it would end in complete chaos and destruction. And so, yeah, you can definitely see that, that there's, People that don't feel loved, people that don't feel adequate, people that are not bearing children that, uh, you know, they're, they're seeing the children as the man's, the pride, right? And in those days, that's what it would be. Your children are going to be, and I guess even today, your children are the, the prize of, of your longevity, of your life. Okay. Um, where are we at, Eli? You are on 10. And Leah's, Leah's film, female servant, Zilpha, bore Jacob's son. And Leah said, what luck? So she called his name Gad. Was it luck? <laughs> and Leah's female servant Zilpha bore Jacob a second son. And Leah said, I am Baruch, for the daughter shall call me Baruch. So she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found love dash, or love apples. I just said it, love dash apples. I am so sorry that I actually said that, folks. My reading abilities have deteriorated since I have been reading this. I just read, I, I did found love dash apples. I'm reading as, I'm surprised I didn't tell you the periods, quotes, and this and that. I'm so sorry. I can read the period quotes. Yeah, Eli and I are completely damaged from reading now. Um, so anyway, he went in there, got love apples in the field, and brought them to his mother, Leah. And Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's love apples. Anyone know what love apples are? I have no this idea. This is mandrakes. Yeah, several some mandrakes. Mandrakes? Uh... I know there's a drake that's a duck. A male duck is a drake. Um, I don't know what mandrake is, though. Uh, probably an apple. Uh, Grand? Brother Glenn, you guys know in there what uh, love apples are exactly? Mandrakes. Um, are there hate apples? If there's love apples, maybe there's hate apples. Maybe there's black there's, apples. I think there's tomatoes. <laughs> Tomato, yeah, throw them at them. Okay, um, we'll, as we try to figure out what love apples are, we will uh, continue. 15. 15. But she said to her, is it, it is a small matter that you have taken away my husband. Would you take away my son's love apples too? And Rachel said, therefore let him lie with you tonight for your son's love apples. Okay, so we go from um, dysfunction Taking to marks. capital dysfunction, right? Now we're, now, we're, now we're totally dysfunctional. And so now we're, uh, and I, you know, this is, this is a certain story, but you have to understand that when he went into the other woman during that night, the people are still in their houses, right? The people are... There's women that are furious and fuming every single night, right? This is not a, a good family experience. This is not something that, yo, wow, this is super great, having four wives and a billion kids and everybody warring with each other, right? Um, you think the brothers Drake all hate each other? A mandrake is the root of a plant. The man, who said that? Drake. Drake? Drake. Drake. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what that is, but I don't know what love apples are, so maybe there's some like really super awesome love apples, and I guess the mandrake's a root of something. Um, whatever it was, it was bargain. It was a bargaining you think, chip. You think the brothers hate each other? I don't know. You know who, who would want to eat those apples, I mean, right? Who, I wouldn't even love. want those. I, I wouldn't even want those apples if it came at that price, right? I like if if, if if my wife had to go with another man or something overnight, and I got this. It, it's I'm not gonna be happy with these apples. I'm not gonna be happy with any of this at all, at all. This family is just so. Much, this is Laban's fault. Laban should have been stoned. Yeah, it's it's not happening, right? So anyway, 
Let's continue on. Wife's over there, like, breaking up. I, I don't know. Are you all right? This is funny. <laughs> okay, 16. Um, Eli, yeah. I need my navigator here, son. Where are you at? Uh, 16. 16. Okay. Is it really on the top yet? Yes. Are no, we no, at the top? No, you're at the 16. I'll seven. see if you're navigating when you know this. Okay, 16. And when Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, Do come in to me, for indeed I have hired you with my son's love apples. And he lay with her that night. You suppose he's just like, oh, okay. Or did he say, what? Excuse me? I don't know. What I, has happened? I mean, at some point, he shouldn't be surprised anymore, but this might be a surprise. If he is close to his wives, he would know that there is complete contention amongst every single one of them. There's a reason he spent right? like five or six days out in the As, sheep field. Here's the thing. If you have a family, it would be like me leaving you guys, going over to my other house across the way, and you guys having to be okay with a whole other family. Dad has a whole other thing. You guys aren't exactly involved in. You're involved only by name only. Okay, let's continue on. Yeah, you're up top. All right, now we're up at the top. And Leah saw that she had ceased from bearing, and she made Zilpha her handmaid free. There's another free one, so they all became free. And gave her unto Jacob his to wife. And Zilpha the handmaid of Leah conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, Good fortune cometh. His children shall surely inherit their inhabitation on the east bide of Jardina. And she called his name Gad. This was east side. Come on. East side. East side? What side? It says Where are you east bide. Yeah. Oh, east bide? <laughs> I don't know. I know. I just read what I see, man. I know. I, we're, not, we're not proofreading the Targums, thank goodness, because it's far worse than the Hallelujah Grifters. Okay. And she called his name Gad. Now, the Jerusalem Post says, and Leah said. It's Jerusalem, not Post. Jerusalem, sorry. Good success cometh. For the feastings of the Gentiles are to be cut off, and she called. And Zilpha, the handmaid of Leah, bare a second son to Jacob. And Leah said, Please shall be mine, for the daughters of Israel, no, praise shall be mine, for the daughters of Israel will praise me, as his children will be praised before Yahuwah for the goodness of the fruit of his land. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of Savan. What is that? Anyone know what Savan is? Um, that's... Some Jewish thing? Yeah, it's, it's month, a Jewish right? month. Oh, and I think is that it's a Jewish the month? third month. Yeah, so for those who do not know, when you come up with things like like month names of like Tammuz or uh, whatever this is, Savant, that is all extracurricular stuff. That is all outside of it. What'd so you... this is the third month because the third month we have... Um, so Savant's the third Shavuot. month? Yeah, Savant's okay. the third month. Right, and that's, and the, so Jew so that's the Jewish thing, and we, we don't keep the month names. Our creator never gave us month names that came out of Babylon, that came out of mysticism of, of it, it's just not, we don't do it. So we have month one, two, three, four, five, and, and this is wrong, but Drake we'll continue. Drake says, love apples is a nightshade fruit like a tomato. So it's kind of it must like have been tomato. awesome. Whatever it was, it was absolutely awesome and it was probably hard to get hold of. Whatever it was, um, that was uh, the buying tokens. Okay. Um, that, right. And Reuben went in the days of Savan in the time of weed harvest and found Yaverikun, Mandrakes in the field. And so this one says Y A V E R Yav Yaver Uchin. Um, whatever it is. Mandrakes in the field, and he brought them to Leah his mother. And Rachel said to Leah, Give me now of thy son's mandrakes. And she said to her, Is it a little thing that thou hast taken my husband, and thou seekest to all to take also my son's mandrakes? And Rachel said, Therefore shall he lie with thee this night for thy son's mandrakes. Uh, yeah, okay. Yep. Jerusalem says, for a week he shall consort with thee. So the Jerusalem is a little different. It says, for a white, a week he shall consort with thee. So we either have mandrakes for a night or we have a week purchase on this. Those must have been worth it. And some heck of mandrakes there. <laughs> okay. And Jacob came from the field at evening. And Leah heard the voice of the brain of the donkey and knew that Jacob had come. And Leah went forth to meet him and said, Thou wilt enter with me. Because hiring, I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes from R Rachel, my sister. So instead of the old uh, 79 Buick LeSabre that comes blowing up into the driveway, you know your husband's home. We have the brain of the donkey, and she <laughs> like goes running outside. Oh, that's my, that's my husband's donkey. So she comes flying out, and um, hey, you're, you're, uh, you're at my pad tonight, you know. Okay, where are we at, Eli? Uh, the grand wants to know, so did Jacob eat the love apple mandrakes? I don't or know. Was it Rachel? I, I don't know who ate them. That was cur that was the cursed mandrakes. Yeah, <laughs> you just have to I wouldn't. I wouldn't want a pie from them. I wouldn't want a food from them. I wouldn't nothing. I think, that, read one I think this is why we get the law of don't marry your wife's sister. I think this is probably it. Your wife's sister or her handmaids or her any relatives. Yeah, any relatives like this. Okay. Um, 
continue on the last sentence. And he lay with her that night. That's and, it. Oh, that was it. Now, now we're done. All right, thanks, David. Continue on. Okay, 17. And Elohim listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. And Leah said, Elohim has given me my hire, because I have given my female servant to my husband. So she called his name Yissachar. Now, something we should probably try to understand in all of this is that we're reading years later. We're reading months, weeks later. Every nine verse has got to be like, what, nine months for kids to pop? Yeah, it's like um, six. All of, all of this stuff. So we're, it's even though it's one sentence down, we're talking long periods of time between verses. And so, 19, and Leah conceived again and bore Jacob his sixth son. And Leah said, Elohim has presented me with a good present. Now my husband is going to dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun. And again, right here, you can see this um, completely dysfunctional family, right? Uh, you can see her longing is that her longing is to have her husband dwell with her, right? Um, that's a huge thing, right? That means that you probably live part of your life without a husband in those kind of conditions. If you have four wives, you're not going to be hanging out with one wife. It's all going to be separated. So there's going to be a horrible, this is probably a horrible family environment. Terrible. Okay, uh, 21. And afterward, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. And Elohim remembered Rachel, and Elohim listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, Elohim has taken away my reproach. So she called his name Yosef and said, Yahuwah has added to me another son. Okay, All right. Nice. Now we're heading back up to the top. And Yahuwah heard the prayer of Leah, and she conceived and bare to Jacob a fifth son. And Leah said, Yahuwah hath given me my reward. For that I gave my handmaid to my husband. Even so shall his children receive a good reward, because they will occupy themselves with the law. And she called his name Issachar. I think it's interesting. It's really, it's really cool when they say things like that, right? They will occupy themselves with the law, right? That's not stuff we hear. We don't even hear this in Genesis anywhere. Something of the sort that it breaks it down just like the Targums. Okay. And Leah conceived again, and very six sons to Jacob, and said, Yahuwah hath endowed me with a good dowry by children. This time will the habitation of my husband be with me, because I have borne him six sons, and thus shall his children receive a good portion. And she called his name Zebulun, and afterward she bare a daughter, and called her name Dinah. For she said, Judgment is from before Yahuwah, that there shall be from me a half of the tribes. But from Rachel, my sister, shall go forth two tribes, even as they shall proceed in like manner from each of the handmaids. You think they really knew this? Uh -huh. You think they, they knew this? Were they like, I mean, were they, because they, they had to be dis, not, in this dysfunctional environment. It, it just had to be a lot of issues, just a, a tremendous amount of issues. It's interesting that they would know things of this nature. I don't know if this was put in afterwards or if they were really truly knew that, you know, there would be two tribes out of her. And who would know that, right? Until you actually heard the story of Joseph, Manasseh, and Ephraim. Okay, where are we at? Uh, and and the prayer of Leah was heard before Yahuwah, and the infants were changed in their wombs, and Joseph was given to the womb of Rachel, and Dinah to the womb of Leah. All so right, really pregnant fake at the or same real? Time. This is what I'm getting. I don't know. Yeah, so those. So were Dinah and Joseph are the same age. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So Dinah, Dinah and Dinah, and Zebulun, and Joseph were all the same. Because Zebulun and Dinah were twins. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, so here it is. Um, I I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that's just some more Jewish like history. Jewish folklore. Yeah. The the legends of the Jews I mean, or something. Y'all y'all's gonna have his plans, right? Y'all's not gonna be like, all right. I guess we'll just swap this for the fun of it. I mean, I mean, it yeah, wouldn't make a lot of sense. Anyways. It it wouldn't make a lot of sense. I, yeah. No, this is and this is again. These are the things that you you gotta chew the meat, spit out the bones, and we don't know. None of this stuff is a salvation issue. It's it's more of like extracurricular adjectives that. that Give us describing things of what's what's happening. Yeah, 25 okay. now. Now we're back to the bottom here. And it came to be when Rachel Rachel had born Yosef and that Jacob said to Laban, send me on my way to go to my own place and to my land. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go. For you yourself know my service which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, if I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. For I have diligently watched that Yahuwah has barak me for your sake. There's no favor in his eyes, bro. I'm yeah, yeah, there's it's over. <laughs> and he said, name me your wages and I give it. So he said to him, you know how I have served you and how your livestock has been with me. 
For the little you had before I came has increased greatly, and Yahuwah has barak you since my coming. But now, when am I to provide for my own house too? And he said, what do I give you? And Jacob said, give me not. If you do this for me, I shall and guard your flocks. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep and all the black ones among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the goats. And these shall be my wages. All right. So we have, um, so basically he gets what? He gets the speckled and spotted. He gets everything that's not a solid color. Is that how you guys read this? Yeah. yeah. Is there anyone with me? Everything like, that's not that? like a regular looking sheep. Yeah, every, well, it's not. It's, it's it's just a different colored sheep. It's not a regular looking sheep. They all look the same. They look like sheep, but they look like different colored sheep. Okay. Now you're on thirty-three. I'm, I'm on thirty-three. Yes. Yeah, okay, thirty-three. And my righteousness shall answer for me in time to come, when you coming, when you come concerning my wage. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and black among the lambs, it is stolen, if it is with me. All right. So this is one way to actually get paid. Um, using the resources that you have, right? Because he wanted to take off with the, he wanted to build his own, his own stuff. And so the only way that he was able to do this is by essentially getting some of Laban's. And if he would have just taken money from Laban, he would have walked away with cash. He would have had no flocks. He would have had nothing. So this was actually a, a really, really good deal. 34. 34. And Laban said, see, let it be according to your word. Okay. okay. Now we're heading back up to the top, folks. And the remembrance, where are we at? Yep. Yep. And the remembrance of Rachel came before Yahuwah, and the voice of her prayer was heard before him, and he said in his word, and he said in his word that he would give her sons. And the Jerusalem says this is, I have no idea what goes on here. Does it go crazy here? Yeah, kind. it's a little strange. All right, we'll read it just even though it's strange, guys. Remember we're spitting out bones. Four keys are held in the hand of Yahuwah of all the world, even Yahuwah. And he will not deliver them either to angel or to seraph. The key of the rain the key of the provender, the key of the sepular, the key of barrenness, the key of rain, for thus the scripture expoundeth, Yahuwah shall open unto shall open unto thee his good treasure. Okay, so he that I mean that makes sense, right? The key of rain, it's always Yah that, that brings and, and stops the rain. Okay. Uh, for the key of the sepular, for yeah, thus yeah, the key of Did I mess up it? Yeah, key of provender right there. Oh, the key of what? Oh, the key of provender. For thus the scripture expoundeth, thou openest thy hand. So provender, I think, is like provisions, right? The provisions of what you are getting. Um, the scripture expoundeth, thou openest thy hand, the key of the sepular. For thus the scripture expoundeth, when I shall open your sepular. Sep I think that's how I say that word, sepular? I think so. Um, the key and the key of barrenness. Scripture expoundeth. And Elohim remembered Rachel. Rachel, these are like these. Good thing we're not editing. Yeah. This. And the word of Yahuwah remembered Rachel in his good compassions. And the word of Yahuwah heard the voice of her prayer, and he said in his word that he would give her children. Okay, that was odd. And he basically took the key and locked it. Yeah, he, that's. And that, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, right? The key of rain is definitely our creator. The key of barrenness. I mean, who else would would be there? I mean, you have uh, people that are attempt to do this, but at the end of the day. Um, our creator is the one who allows people to be fertile or not. Okay. And still up top. Still up top. And she conceived and bare a son and said, Yahuda hath gathered Yahuwah. off my... Oh, Yahuwah. Look like... I, sorry, I have a little speck up there on the top. Um, Yahuwah hath gathered off my reproach, even as Josh, Jehoshua, the son of Joseph, will gather off the reproach of Mizraim from the sons of Israel and will circumcise them beyond Jardina. And she called his name Joseph, saying, Yahuwah will add me yet another son to this one. And it was when Rachel had born Joseph, Jacob said by the Ruach HaKadosh concerning the house of Joseph, they are to be as a flame to consume the house of Esau. And he said, therefore will I not be afraid of Esau and his legions. And he said unto Laban, send me away, and I will go to my place and, my, and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee, for, and I will go. For thou knowest my service with which I have served thee. But Laban said to him, If now I have found grace in thine eyes, uh, that's what it says, comma. Oh. Yeah, I think it's Jerusalem. Oh, and then Jerusalem just says, I have observed. But this is weird, because I have found grace in my eyes. I have observed by divination that Yahuwah hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint thy wages, and I will give thee. So that didn't make a lot of sense. Basically, you skip the Jerusalem. Yeah, skip. I just jacked it up. I'm gone now. Uh... It, did, it skipped around right there. Where am I? At? Sorry, guys. My navigator's bringing right, us right back. Right. 
Right. Okay. So, and th so this is what Laban was talking about. He's he's observed by divination, right? And we know that Rachel stole the little. He had like a skull where they they took a man's skull, they killed him, and then they put under his tongue like a piece of gold. Where do we hear about this at? Is this in Jasher? Yeah, it's in Jasher. Is this in Jasher? They talk about this. Um, but anyway, this this is literally it was some kind of like creepy skull that was um, they were able to see things, and that's why Rachel stole that. But here it's even talking about him that these little uh, little skull things are his idols and stuff. They were telling him what's what's really going on, which is extremely creepy. Okay, and he said to him, "Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle have been kept by me." For the little flock which thou hadst before me hath increased greatly, and Yahuwah hath blessed thee at my foot, that I have been profitable to thee from the time of my coming into thy house. And now, when I shall do the work for which I am bound to nourish the men of my house. And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything else, but do this thing, and I will return and pasture thy flock and keep them. I will pass through thy whole flock today. And will set apart every lamb streaked and spotted, and every black lamb among the lambs, and spotted and streaked among the goats, and they shall be my wages. So everything that had a anything that didn't look just straight colored became his. Um, Jerusalem says, Every lamb spotted and streaked, and every black lamb among the lambs, and the spotted and streaked among the goats. Continue on. And my righteousness shall testify for me tomorrow, when my wages shall be brought before thee. Every one which is not streaked or spotted among the goats or black among the lambs shall be as it, as if it had been a theft of mine. Okay. And Laban said to him, Well, let it be according to thy word. And he separated that day the goats which were marked in their feet and, and the spotted and all the goats streaked or spotted, every one which had a white place in him and every black one among the lambs. And he gave them into the hand of his sons. Okay. Down below, now, 35. Okay. 35. At the bottom. And on that day, he put aside the male goats that were speckled and spotted, and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had some white in it, and all the black ones among the lambs, and gave them into the hands, hand of his sons. And he put three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. So um, he basically got far away from this dude, like far, far away, which is probably a good idea. 37. And Jacob took for himself rods of green poplar, and of the almond and chestnut trees peeled white strips in them and exposed the white which was in the rods. And he put the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink and they conceived when they came to drink. Okay, um, is the target going to this and explain this more? I don't think so. So this is, um, this is one of these fascinating things which is, um, I guess, the breeding of lambs and goats is that um, somehow you can actually get them to uh, breed differently with your your um, your setup. And so somehow he was able to figure this out. And I think, I can't remember where it was, the, the Ruha HaKadosh or some uh, in messenger, someone told Jakob how to do this um, to make this happen. 39. So the flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted. And Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the street and all the black in the flock of Laban. But he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock. And it came to be, the strong ones of the flock conceived that Jacob placed the rods before the eyes of the flock in the gutters so they would conceive among the rods. But when the flocks were weak, he did not put them in. So the weak ones were Laban's and the strong ones Jacob's. Was he ripping this guy off? Yeah. Does this sound like he's just ripping this guy? I, off? I think I think they're even a little even after this. They're, pro they're probably even. I mean, because he had no he had no um, sheep and lambs before that because they all died off, and so Laban had really nothing when yeah, Jacob after, came there. After the whole Rachel Leah thing, probably. Yeah, an extra seven years. Yeah, I would say put it to him. Okay, forty three. Thus the man increased very much and had many flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Okay, so he uh, he scored. Okay. Now, where are we at? And. And. So we're back to the Targums at the top. And he set a journey of three days between his flocks and those of Jacob. And Jacob tended the flock of Laban, the old and the feeble, which were left. <laughs> so, yeah, the old and feeble. Um, that's, yeah. Laban had these ones. Yeah. Basically, he ends up with what he had when he started. Well, he, he yeah, he had the broken ones. And Jacob took all the strong ones, and he bred them with the, uh, the other strong ones. And, the, you know, then they came out with... Uh, Speckled and things like that. Okay, Jacob took to him a rod of flowering poplar and of almond 
and of the plane tree and peeled them in white peelings to disclose the white which was in the rods and the rods which he had peeled he fixed in the canals in the troughs of water at the place to which they brought the flocks to water there placed he them over against the flock that they might conceive when they came to drink so there's some sort of uh Special thing, I guess, if you guys are ever, uh, anyone out there that ever listens that is into this, you guys need to breed really strong uh, lambs and things. This is the recipe for this, just so you know. Maybe okay. get something out of this. Jerusalem, okay. in the canals. And the Jerusalem says, in the canals. So, in the watering troughs or wherever it was. Okay. And the sheep concede over against the rods, and the sheep produce such as were marked in their feet, and spotted and white in their backs. And the lambs did Jacob set apart and place in front of the flocks all the various colors and the black among Laban's sheep, he, it should be, he set for himself a flock apart and did not mix them with the sheep of Laban. And it was that whenever the early prime sheep conceived, Jacob set the rods in the canals before the eyes of the sheep, that they might conceive before the rods. But with the late sheep, he did not set them. And the late sheep were Laban's and the early ones Jacob's. And the man increased gratefully and had a multitude of flocks and handmaids and servants and camels and donkeys. Okay. That is the end of that. Um, Jay, do you have your uh, ironic blessing yeah. you'll do for us as well? Yeah. All right, Mr. Cole, what's going on? Anything going on in the chat room? Um, I don't think so. Everyone uh, still alive in there? Hope you guys are good. Um, that is it. Um, we will leave it at this. Um, Jade is going to do an ironic blessing for us. Uh, what you got? The grand says that's me, old and feeble. Old and feeble? Uh, it feels like me sometimes. I don't know how you guys make it at your age. Brother Glenn and Graham, you guys are heroes. You guys are legends. How do you guys do it? I could barely roll out of bed. My goodness. Okay, Jade, let's... Wait. Yep. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is how you barak the children of Yashrael. Say to them, Yahuwah barak you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yahuwah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Thus they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I myself shall barak them. Yeah, may you guys be blessed. May you guys forever seek Yahuwah. May you guys forever seek his ways. We have a good way forward. We have a leader. We have a, a king who is on his way. We have righteousness. We have, you know, that's the thing about our, our, our leader is our leader is holy in everything. Our, our creator doesn't lie. He doesn't steal. He's not abominable he doesn't do any of that stuff and that makes him awesome it makes him really really good because if you look at the leader of the satanist who is hasatan he's just vile corrupt evil do as you wish do as you want and it's completely opposite of the way that we are supposed to act and so the torah is for all time the torah is for you the torah will enhance you it will be the greatest thing that you guys will ever have and i hope you guys find the faith of messiah yahushua because without him we have no hope either. And so it's a two-way street, and um, I guess we will leave this with you. Eli, what, what song are we going to do? Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. All right. I guess we're in this. Nicole hates this Rin the Heavens because she says I play it all the I time. I hate it. You She's, just play it all the time. And I give her a whole bunch of stuff about her song picks. So I guess we'll just leave it with this. We love you guys very, very much. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you guys for being a part of our family. We love you guys very, very much. Now, where are we at? Eli, where's your right. There it is. Let's do it. All right, guys. Rin the Heavens.
For the sake of Zion And all the nations that we are All right, guys, thank you very, very much. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May his light forever shine upon you guys. May you forever find the Torah as the greatest thing that you guys find in the faith of Messiah Yahushua. We love you guys very, very much. Uh, Have a good day, guys. Shalom. Shalom.